What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Welcome back once again, Model Car Mechanics, to our unboxing series. And today we are going to be looking at the Model Master Screechosaurus from Testers. Now this is actually a Jimmy Flintstone model kit. It is a 125th scale resin slammer kit. The actual length is 5 and 1 8 which is 18.1 centimeters long. This car is designed by Jimmy Flintstone and it is based off of the first generation Chevy Astro vans which were produced from 1985 I believe up until 1992 and then they got replaced by the second generation vans. What's really cool about this is you get photo etch metal grill in here as well as steel wheels and these two amazing surfing figures. This is a limited edition model kit, although I still see that old Jimmy has a whole bunch on his website for sale, so if you want one, go and check it out. On this side of the box, we can see some more images of the Screechosaurus. This almost looks like it's on a pegboard wall, but it's really just the way the box is. There's a front three-quarter and then the rear three-quarter and a side front view. You also get this nice frisket film here so that you can mask off this amazing paint job. And on this side of the box, we read that it includes all of these parts and accessories, 125th scale Screechosaurus Slammer Kit, Jimmy Flintstone figure and surfboard, Nitro Bum figure, that's a little uh, weird alien guy, tar pit tape, Jimmy Flintstone's new pre-cut pressure sensitive masking system. So uh, let's flip this over and open the lid and see what's inside. This box consists of the fold up top, which is really cool. Well, whatever. No, it's a good sturdy cardboard box for sure. And then here's our body. Check this thing out. All as one big piece. And it's really thick in here too. So if this falls off your shelf, there's a good chance that uh, the floor is going to take more damage than the model. There's our underbody, which is really cool. And then here we get the steel wheels and the rubber tires and then our figures and some of the car accessories. There's some nice brass rod, which I do believe is our axles. The instructions, photo etched parts, and the tar pit tape. Now this is really cool, so uh, let's actually take a better in-depth look at this. The instructions for this model are really straightforward. You just have the solid van body. You've got the little uh, airfoil at the top, and then our clear and photo etch bits. There's the metal wheel going through the rubber tire into the metal axle. You're going to do that on all four sides. It looks like there's longer ones in the back. Then you've got your rear bumper and your front bumper. There's a little license plate and our chassis pan. And those little uh, bits go up in this way and not the other way down. Jimmy Flintstone has also given us a long description of the preparation of resin parts and uh, what happens if your part warps, how to do bodywork, painting, stripping unwanted paint finishes, glue and adhesives to use, photo etch detail parts, metal parts, headlights, and the assembly, and then how to use Jimmy's tar pit tape in seven easy steps. Here we have the solid resin body of our Astro van, and there it is in the front. Really a nice work on here. Excellent how it came out. Detail is crisp. Now there are bits of flash, but that is common on resin. And there's also these little teeny pinholes like that. You can fill those in with uh, some baking soda and crazy glue. That's one way to do it. Or use body filler. It all depends, right? Look at the back end. Looks really nice. It's even got the sunken in area for the license plate. Jimmy really did well on making this look just like the proper Astro van. Even has the uh, sliding door in here. It's, all of this, of course, is molded shut because this is what's known as a slammer kit. And you do paint the uh, windows, paint them all black, whatever you want to do. But uh, basically this is solid. Now I would not try to uh, recommend cutting out the windows and the windshield. I mean, if you're really in-depth, you can. But uh, look at how thick this is. That's like half inch thick of resin. So like I said earlier, you know, if this falls off the shelf, it's going to hurt the floor more than it will the model. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, that's how it is as a solid resin body. But again, very nice. I mean, there's hardly any of those little teeny pinholes anywhere. In fact, I think there's only a few just around here and on the inside. 
Those are created by air bubbles in the resin, in case you're wondering. But uh, yeah, overall, there's a bit of flash, but that's common to resin kits. Easy to sand and get rid of this, but always make sure you wear a, a, a paper mask because that dust is not good in your lungs. Now here we have the basic straightforward chassis for this model. One thing you will have to do is saw off this little rough edge here right along the line. And that's so that the undercarriage will fit into the body. Now this is supposed to go this way in. So that would give the uh, model its lowered stance. But uh, you can see how nice that fits in and just how perfectly flat and beautiful this is. Here we have the remaining resin pieces of this kit, which includes our figures and the front bumpers. We also have some white metal components that also improve this kit. So for our bumpers and our airfoil, you can see that there is a bit of flash in between here, but it'll clean up easy. That's just the nature of resin. What is nice is that it's really smooth on the bumpers as well as the airfoil. So Jimmy actually put some good time and effort into making this really excellent for you. Now, if you need paint to attach to this, I'd recommend using really fine sandpaper like 800 grit just to get the tooth on there so that you can paint. Here's the side mirrors and our little front headlights. Now in order to get these off the tree, you just need to snip them and then use your file around the edges just to clean them up. This nice little gremlin type figure is really cool. He's made out of solid white metal. So in order to get him to stand properly, you'll need your sandpaper block and just sand the bottom of his feet on there just to flatten it out and uh, he'll stand up nice for you. You also have to get rid of these little whiskers that are on some of the components. That's the way white metal is actually cast. I've done a lot of white metal models with the Games Workshop pieces, but never quite this one. So you want to uh, actually clean them in some white vinegar or something like that just to get some of this uh, little white metal junk off them and spray paint them with some flat black primer. Okay, moving on, here's our surfboard with the arm on there for our surfer dude, Jungle Man. Again, there's a big piece of resin here, so you have to just saw that off, clip it off, and uh, sandpaper the edge down so it's nice and clean. Again, very excellent casting for resin from Jimmy. There's our surf dude, the jungle guy <laughs> with his sunglasses. Typical 80s, early 90s type look. And of course, running shoes. Now you'll need to uh, cut this away in here but it should clean up fairly simply. There's not too many uh, seam lines on this, but you will have to flatten out those arm areas and on the back of these arms. Here, come here. <laughs> on the back of the arm there, just so that it's nice and flat and flush when you actually glue the arms on. And what you use to glue resin is basic crazy glue. And here we have the Screechosaurus wheel and tire set. And for any of you that have built white metal Dungeons & Dragons figures back in the 80s, you know exactly what we got here. Yeah, that's right, white metal wheels. And one thing about them is some of them do have flash in between these holes, but you should be able to get rid of that like very easily with some uh, metal files or even your hobby knife. You can see that I'm actually squishing little holes into it <laughs> right here with the uh, bamboo stick. So. It's not really that difficult to get rid of. You will also have to polish these in here. Maybe use a Q-tip or something. You can see they've got a hole in the back just like AMT wheels and the metal axle will fit through. This is a bit of a sloppy fit, but you might be able to just use that hole as a bit of a pilot to uh, use a drill for this size and drill down a little bit deeper. And uh, hopefully don't go through the center post here. But uh, yeah, that, that should be able to fit in there quite nice. The tires are Goodyear Eagles, which were popular back in the 90s. They're directional as well. So make sure you've got the directional curve going the right way. And they're really squishy. So they will just go up on here like that. And there you've got that nice low profile with the wheels. So again, these are very nicely done, but it's gonna require some effort to really get this to uh, look nice with those white metal wheels. Here we have the photo etch grill and also we have our license plates on here. I will turn this over just so you can see. Okay, so one of them says Screech, the other says Jimmy, then we've got one that says Bum, and then we've got one that says Nitro Bum. 
And that's what the little gremlin guy's name is, is Nitro Bum. Uh, now with photo etch parts, again, it's a bit tricky. You need to uh, snip these out. Use your number 16 hobby blade. And then uh, where the parts are attached, I always find it difficult to get rid of the little button on there. So just be careful with it. Um, they do tend to bend a little easy. So again, light pressure and uh, good luck. The tar pit tape has arrived. This is Jimmy Flintstone's new tar pit pre-cut masks. And this is what it looks like there. Now, I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. There's all these uh, little lines that are in that kind of 90s splash effect. So I'm going to just use this corner here. So you basically peel this off. And then uh, there it goes. And then you put the frisket film where you want it on your model and you rub down all the edges and then you can paint whatever color it is. Put some proper masking tape behind here, if you know what I mean, just to protect your car body. And then uh, you can paint it and it'll end up looking like the Screechosaurus on the box. On the back of this postcard, it gives you Jimmy Flintstone's address and phone number and all that. So you can talk to the man himself. And uh, if you have a problem, Jimmy will fix it. So it shows you how to work with the tar pit tape in the seven easy steps with pictures so that you can get your model looking great. And there it is, like I say, you leave the frisket open and you mask the rest of the car, then you paint it and you got your little flames, or in this case, these very interesting 1990s style scallops. Hey, surfing dudes, this is Danny the dog. Have you ever built this model kit? And if so, how did you like putting it together? Did you find it pretty easy or did you find it kind of hard to do a resin kit before? Hey, if you built it, let us know in the comment section down below how you liked it. And until then, Kawabunga, dudes! Well, I hope you enjoyed that unboxing video of the Jimmy Flintstone Screechosaurus model kit. I don't think there's another one of these out on the web, so I'm happy to be the first one to actually open this kit and show it all to you. Now, if you want to see what model kits are available at my online hobby shop, please check out this link down here. It'll take you directly to www.monster-hobbies.ca to our model car page. It's easy to navigate through. Just click on the kind of car you want and our lists will come up. So for example, you can click on General Motors and all our General Motors cars will come up. It's a really cool way to shop. So until next time, everybody, happy model building.